Thank you for checking out this video. You are with Coach Glenda from Tiger Shield Academy. Let's take a look at question 1. This is a question related to time. The time now is 4 p.m. At what time would the minute hand and hour hand be of the same distance from the number 4? So the clock on the left actually shows 4 p.m. And the clock on the right will show what is the condition which is in the question. Okay, where the minute hand and hour hand are of equal distance from number 4. So how do we draw is we will first draw a line from the center to 4. And we will then draw our hour hand and the minute hand of equal distance from the line. So you will know that actually the time will be between 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. for the condition to be satisfied. And more specifically, it will be between 4.15 and 4.20 because your minute hand will not should not cross the number 4. So it will not go beyond 4.20 p.m. So we will first let this, the minutes, past 4pm be x minutes. Okay, we denoted it on the clock as well. So you have to understand that when the minute hand moves one round, Okay, if it moves round round, it will move through 12 numbers. The hour hand only moves 1 12 of a round. So take an example, okay, from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock. Your hour hand will only move from number 4 to 5. But your minute hand will move 12 numbers back to 12 which means that the hour hand only moves one twelfth of a round. This will be important to figure out what is the small angle by the hour hand because it will actually be one twelfth x, one twelfth of the minutes. And the small angle by the minute hand will then be 20 minus x because 20 minutes minus x minutes okay it will give you the remaining small angle over here and now you have two equations in terms of x what you can do is to equate the both of them together you will know that the angle will be the same so you have 20 minus x equals to 1 over 12x. Shift the x over to the other side. You'll get 20 equals to 1 over 12x plus x. So for x, you have 13 over 12x equals to 20. x is equals to 20 times 12 over 13. Which is also equals to 240 over 13. And this will give me 18, 6 over 13 minutes. So once you found x, you will need to read the question again. The question is asking at what time. Okay? At what time? Will the minute hand and hour hand be the same distance? So it will actually be. 4 18 p.m. because the 6 over 13 will be your seconds right which you will not be able to show on the clock through your minute and hour hand so 4 18 p.m. will be your nearest minute so that's your answer for question 1 Let's move on to question 2. Question 2 asks to find the sum of digits in 8. 9 8 times 9 9. So it will be 
impossible okay or if not it would take really really long to go and calculate it by your workings so what we want to do is to figure out a pattern so let's take a look at method one first we have eight times nine okay we start off with a small case because they seem to have a pattern going on you start with one eight and one nine that will give you 72 continue the pattern you do 88 times 99 that will give you 8712 move on and do 888 times 999 you will get 887112 now if you're going to notice the pattern you will actually see 7 and 2 7 2 7 2 the only addition to the pattern is your number of 8s and number of 1s. And if you're going to notice, there's going to actually be one less 8 on the final one and one less 1 compared to your number of 8s and number of 9s. So this should give you a clue that if you're going to have 9 8s times 9 9s, It will actually equals to one less of eight, which means that there'll be eight eights and the one seven eight ones and one two. So you don't have to write it out, just have to know how many by bracket it. Okay, put a small bracket there. And you actually notice that you can form a pair of 9. Okay, you want to find the sum of the digits. So you're just adding 8 plus 8 plus 8 all the way plus 7 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 all the way and plus 2. So if you're going to notice, 8 plus 1 will actually form a pair of 9. And there are equal number of 8 and 1 pairs. Okay, because there are 8 8 and 8 1s. So 7 and 2 will also form up a pair of 9. So you will notice that there will actually be 9 pairs of 9. Which will give you a 9 times 9, 81. So this is for method 1, okay? To find using a pattern. So if you're going to look at method 2 it involves a bit of calculation you first have your 8 you first have 9 8 times 1 okay 1 0 0 0 0 minus 1 and this number of zeros is actually going to be 9 zeros. Okay? You try to change your 9 nines in the question above here to 1 0 0 0 with 9 zeros minus 1. And this was also, but if you're going to expand it, it will give you 8 8 times. Okay? There will be here 9 eights, 9 zeros, minus 8, 8, 8, 8, and 9 eights, okay? So with this, it's going to be hard to calculate again, but I want you to look at a small sample, okay? Start with a small sample as what we did in method 1. So... We can have maybe four eights, okay? Four zeros minus four eights. What you notice is that by doing your calculation, okay, your 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 workings, you will keep your first eight, right? This eight you will cross out to give us seven because you want to carry over a one to minus of the eight zero come minus eight. So you need a 10. 
But you notice that here, this next zero also come minus an 8. So you have to cross out and leave 9. And you're going to carry over a 1. Minus 9, carry over a 1. Until the last one where you don't have to carry over anymore. So you have half with 7. Okay, this will be a 7. But it minus a 0 here. The last 3, you have 9 minus 8. Which will give me 1. 9 minus 8, which will give me another 1. And you realize that there will be 3 1s and the last one will be a 2. And this will give you 4 pairs of 9, which is going to be the same case as what we're going to do earlier in method 1. So if you're going to look when there are 4 pairs, okay, 4 8s, 4 zeros, there will be 4 pairs of 9. So, with 9 eights and 9 zeros, there will be 9 pairs of 9, which will give me 81 as well. Let's move on to question 3. So, this figure shown is a regular pentagon and you're supposed to find the interior angle X. So, what you can do is to first create 3 triangles which we can split up like this. It doesn't matter if the triangles are not equal, they are not of the same shape or the same size. What you will have to know is that the sum of three interior angles is 180. And given that there are three triangles, the total sum of angle in the pentagon will simply be 180 degrees times 3 and that will be 540 degrees and because all interior angles in the pentagon are equal they are have equal sides okay so your interior angle x will simply be 540 degrees divided by 5, which is equal to 108 degrees. Let's look at question 4 now. This is a probability question. A die has 6 faces, each numbered with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Simi throws a die 2 times and recorded the numbers. It's supposed to find the probability that the sum of the two numbers is prime. So what we should always first do is to list out all your possible outcomes so that you don't miss any outcome. You have 1, 1, 1, 2, all the way to 1, 6. Okay? And you will have 2, 1, 2, 2. So you just list all of them out. And if you notice, you will actually have your 36 cases. What you want to first do is to identify what are your prime numbers, which will actually be 2, 3, 5, 7, and 11 in this case. Because you have to know that 6, 6, which is the sum of 6 and 6 is 12, that will be your maximum sum. So there will not be able to be any prime numbers of 13, 17, 19, so on and so forth. So if we're going to look over here, you'll realize that you have to find which possible outcomes in this table of 36 outcomes are going to satisfy the sum of prime numbers in this here. So you have your 1, 1, okay, your 1, 2, 2, 1, and you want to find the sum of 5, 1, 4, sum of 7, okay, so we just box them all up, 2, 5, 3, 2, 3, 7, 4, 1, 
four three five two okay and you have your five six six five and six one so if you're gonna count there'll be one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen which means that the probability of your prime numbers okay the sum being prime numbers will actually be 15 over 36 simplify by dividing by 3 get 5 over 12 as your answer let's take a look at question 5 the area of a circle is given as pi r squared, where r is the radius, and pi is equal to 22 over 7 or 3.14. Find the area of the shaded regions in a figure using pi is equal to 22 over 7. So if you're going to look at the figure, you'll notice that there are two equal quadrants and the shaded regions are equal as well. So it, is suffice, it suffices to do 2 times of a quadrant. So we can just find an area of a quadrant instead of a semicircle using 1 quarter pi r squared, which is 1 quarter of a circle. You can take 1 quarter times 22 over 7 times 14 and 14, which is your radius over here. So we can do some cancellation 14 Right, you can cancel with 7, so giving you a 2. And you can cancel out your 4 with a 2 and a 7. So what you're left with is going to be 22 times 7, which will be equals to your 20 times 20 plus 2, whole thing times 7. And this is equals to 140 plus 14, which is equals to 154 cm squared. So once you find a quadrant, you'll realize that you can simply minus the triangle to give you the area of the shaded region. So what we want to do now is to find the area of a triangle which will be half times your base, which is 14, times the height, which is also 14. Cancel, divide by 2, you get 7 times 14, which will be 98 cm squared. So you can then now take your 154 minus 98, which will give us 56 cm squared. This is the area of one shaded region. All you have to do now is 56 times 2, which will give us 1, 1, 2 cm squared. And that will be your answer for the area of the shaded regions in the figure. We have completed this lesson. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson. Goodbye and see you again in another lesson.